In my mid-twenties, I hiked the Grand Canyon, rim to rim. It was amazing, awe-inspiring, the best night of my life. It was also the best week of my life. It was also in July, in Arizona, in the middle of the desert. So it was hot. A few summers later, I found myself single, lonely, and looking for someone to hike with. I did what a lot of people do. I opened a bottle of wine, turned on my computer, and logged into MySpace, which for you youngsters out there is kind of like Facebook, but without the great marketing. <laughs> a few glasses of wine later, and I found myself suckered. I clicked on an ad and ended up setting up a free dating profile on a site called Fitness Singles. I did good. I started with the standard headshot, you know, taken from above so I didn't look fat. I added the full body picture because I know guys need to see the total package to make their judgment call. And then I included a few pictures of myself having fun to show that, well, you know, I'm fun. The writing part was the hard part because I am a writer and an avid reader and, well, I know that men just aren't that smart. <laughs> and they don't like women to be too smart either, so I had to play that whole part down. Then there was the whole activities section. The problem with that is I really am the perfect girl. I love hiking and playing sports and travel and all those things that guys like. Well, my kind of guys, but of course, every girl puts that in their profile. Hi, my name is Janine, and I love sports and travel and hiking in the woods. Bullshit, Janine. <laughs> I love that stuff for real. Then I remembered what my mama used to say, a picture's worth a thousand words. So I posted some pictures of me being sporty and sweaty and hot, like the one of me at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It's an awesome picture. I'm decked out in a wide-rimmed hat, got my sunglasses on, a bandana tied around my neck. I'm drinking a jug of water standing next to a thermostat that read 138 degrees. I told you it was hot. Now, I looked it up. It has to be 155 degrees to fry an egg, in case you want to try this at home. But I still felt like I was baking the whole time I was down there. I mean, my sweat evaporated before I had time to be sweat. I'm very proud of myself for surviving that week. And because you couldn't really tell where the photo was taken, I posted a cute little caption with it that read, it really was that hot at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It worked. The next day, I got a message from a boy. <laughs> now let me tell you about James. The first thing you need to know about James is that he had no profile picture. If you've ever done online dating, you know what that means. <laughs> if you've never done it, let me explain. Every guy who refuses to post a picture says he is taking a moral stand against shallowness. In other words, he's married, ugly, or just playing games, none of which is a good thing. You don't have to be a Hottie McCotterson for me to want to date you, but I'd like to see a photo to know that you're human, or at least humanoid, I don't date outside my species. And frankly, I'm very busy, so if there's no way in hell I'm gonna be attracted to you, it's better if we decide that ahead of time. It goes both ways. I know it's hard to believe, but there are some men out there who might not think I'm attractive. It's better that he decides that ahead of time, before he wastes all that money buying himself a drink when he realizes I'm not worth one. But James was not only morally superior. No, no, you see, he was also a geologist, which meant that he was intellectually superior, which is usually my shtick. <laughs> James had an agenda. He was writing to tell me that I should take down that photo from the Grand Canyon because it was a lie. He said temperatures on the Earth don't get to 138 degrees. And that I was only making myself look stupid by sharing that photo. As charming as his approach was, I didn't respond. But he emailed me again a couple days later and said he noticed I still hadn't taken the photo down. <laughs> 
him props for being so observant, but still didn't respond. When he emailed me a third time to let me know that I was still wrong, I realized he wasn't gonna leave me alone. I sent him a very well thought out and considerate email explaining the origin of the photo and how it wasn't doctored and I wasn't lying, so I wasn't gonna take it down. I went so far as to explain to him how the ranger had told us, well, temperatures don't normally get that high, but the Grand Canyon is like a giant oven and all the heat gets trapped down there, so in some cases it can get very hot. I put James out of my mind for the hour it took him to respond. <laughs> he was adamant that I was wrong, that the thermostat was wrong, and even if the ranger had told us that the Grand Canyon is a giant oven, well, he was a geologist. And because he felt so passionately about this issue, he offered to educate me over dinner. Um, I know what you're thinking. I said yes, and now we're getting married. It's just like on eHarmony. <laughs> But that's not what happened. <laughs> Although every woman's dream man is one who insists that she's wrong, possibly lying, and looks stupid before even meeting her, <laughs> I passed on the opportunity. I blocked James so he couldn't bother me anymore. Still, he had insisted that I was wrong, and I really like being right. I looked it up. According to Google, the highest temperature ever reached on the Earth was 135 degrees. So my photo was wrong. I didn't take it down, though. Not from fitness singles, not from MySpace, not from Facebook. I may not have survived 138 degrees, but I did bake in the Grand Canyon oven, and that photo showed exactly how hot I was. <laughs> now, online dating wasn't the best experience for me, but it did teach me a few skills, like, for example, how to set up a great profile, which I did on MySpace, where I met my fiance. And he loves to hike. <laughs> and he usually lets me think I'm right. <laughs> and because of my luck, and because, well, I'm a giver, I want there to be a place for everyone even geologists to find their one true love. So I'm starting a new website called geologistsingles.com. <laughs> it's gonna be the hottest site on Earth, slightly over 135 degrees.